Hi, this is Scott with Spectre Gear. We're out at the range today doing a little bit of revolver work. One of the topics I want to cover today is actually how to speed load a revolver. And this is an area, particularly for people that are used to dealing with auto loaders, that when they start messing with revolvers, it makes them a little bit nervous um, because they think it's going to be a lot slower than it actually is. They think it's going to be a lot more difficult than it actually is and require a higher level of dexterity than it would for the auto loader. And in all of those cases, they are partially true. Um, yes, I can, I can speed load a magazine into a semi-automatic pistol faster than I can with a revolver. But I can also speed load a revolver fast enough that I'm not that terribly worried about it, to be honest with you. Especially when I look in terms of the trade-off value between what I could potentially carry in an auto loader versus the kind of bullets I can carry in, uh, in a revolver. It's compromises, right? But when we're talking about speed loading a revolver, it does require a certain amount of manual dexterity and it does require kind of switching the gun around in your hand. Um, but if you have a firm understanding of this, it's, it's genuinely not that difficult. So let me demystify it just a little bit for you. So the first task that you're going to run into when you fired your, your last round in the revolver is you need to get that cylinder open and you need to get those empty casings out of the cylinder as quickly as possible because you can't load any light, any fresh ammo in until you clear a space for it in the cylinder. So that's the first part of this. And I'm going to break it down into the distinct parts nice and slow. And then I'll do a couple of actual reloads and you can see how it actually works. But step one, open the cylinder. So to do that, you're going to require your support hand. So you actuate your cylinder release, reach under the gun, pop the cylinder open. Now from there, I'm going to show you, now rather than show you all the wrong ways that you can do this, I'm just going to show you two correct ways to do this. I will identify one variation on that that you want to avoid, but upon popping the cylinder open, the, everything's already exactly where it needs to be for you to move to the next step on option one. So option one would be, when I open that cylinder, I set the trigger guard into the palm of my hand. I contact the side of the cylinder with one or two of my, my fingers of my support hand and push the cylinder out of the opening, or out of the window is what it's called in the frame. And then I leave it right there. All I do is just close my thumb down on top of the cylinder. These fingers stay where they are in that, uh, that window area of the frame. And I just tilt the muzzle up. Once I tilt the muzzle up, I take the palm of my hand and I come right down on the ejector rod one full complete press and the round should fall out of the the cylinder onto the ground and it should clear a path for me to now run my speed loader in because at that point all i do is just simply point the muzzle down and i'm ready to go with the loader now option two and this is going to be an option and it's one that i'm actually transitioning to and that option is uh, more amenable to using with uh, the smaller guns like the j frames because the j frame has a frame that is smaller front to back uh, it has a very small cylinder, especially for people with big hands. If you try this method, because of the, the reduced length of the frame and because of the reduced cylinder size, when you tilt your hand up, and it's kind of difficult to see, but even with this, I've got a portion of my hand that's just right about even with the yoke that holds the cylinder. So when I press down... I'm right on the edge of running out of space when my hand goes down. The, the palm makes full contact with the hand, and with the smaller weapons like the J-frame, sometimes you don't get a full run of that extractor rod or ejector rod. So this second method, I kind of like it a little bit more, but as I say, it's one that I'm transitioning to. I still tend to fall back to that as my primary method, but the second method, what we're going to do is when we pop that cylinder open, all we're going to do is take that thumb that was on the thumb release, or rather the uh, cylinder release, and just slide it forward and contact the top of the cylinder. From there, we tilt up and run down. What that does for you is it doesn't provide any impediments to running that ejector rod to full length. So it's wide open, and you can press straight down. So you can experiment with one or the other and see which one works best. And then from there, when it comes time to line up uh, on the speed loader, I just simply drop it back into my hand and hold it muzzle down. And you want to try, that's another thing when you go to the muzzle down orientation, you want to try this, try to get this as, as much pointed straight to the ground as you possibly can. Um, now, from this point, 
I would just simply go to my belt, extract out my speed loader, and all you need to do at this point, you got six bullet tips, you got six charge holes. You're not going to try to line up all six at the same time. The quickest way to do this is to line up two. Just take these two right here, drop them into those two charge holes, and just let her go. What will happen is the speed loader will fall into place. All six rounds will then fall into the charge holes. All you need to do at that point is turn the knob or push on the speed loader body to release the rounds. Let the speed loader fall away to the ground. It's no longer of consequence to you. And then close your cylinder. When I close my cylinder, I also try to push up on the cylinder, so I index it. Sometimes we can get the cylinder to close between stops and it's kind of moving around. You want to take and turn that so it locks into place, and now you're ready to press your shot and your reload is done. Now let me show you, before I get too deep here, let me show you that mistake that uh, you might make. And this is, this is the way speed loading was taught back in the old days. And the reason it, it caught on and didn't become much of a problem was most people were qualifying with like 148 grain real light duty uh, target loads. And then they would carry duty ammunition on the street, but they would qualify with basically nerf rounds. So the forcing cone didn't get too terribly hot. And what I mean by the forcing cone is that's this, this end of the barrel. Um, it's basically a, a little bit of an open, open flange so that when the round comes, exits a cylinder and goes to engage the barrel, it kind of lines it up on the rifling and then continues out. So uh, if you've ever seen a revolver fired, you notice the amount of flame that comes out between the cylinder gap. Uh, that's the front of the cylinder and the back side of that forcing cone. Long story short, you fire some 357 mag or you fire some plus P rounds, this forcing cone is going to get pretty darn hot. So this is what I have seen happen twice on the range. What will happen is the shooter will finish firing, they'll open their cylinder, and the way they used to teach reloads was to take two fingers, come in just like that, and then tilt the gun up. Okay. Now do you see a problem with this? My finger is in contact with the forcing cone right now. And I've even seen guys get in nice and deep and do this. I've seen them do this too. This used to be a thing back in the 70s. Whole time that forcing cone is resting on my finger. Now I will tell you, you fire off a couple 125 grain semi jacketed hollow point 357 magnum rounds and you do that, you're going to have a nice brand new little happy face brand on the inside of your finger. It's not going to feel good. And what will happen in at least one case that I saw uh, was the person will just drop the gun onto the ground. In the other case, the person basically just started running around and flapping their arm with the gun still attached to their hand. Uh, people do odd and bizarre stuff when they encounter hot brass on the range. It happens. But that's kind of it in a nutshell. So what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and do a reload. And then uh, from here, I'll go ahead and just kind of uh, walk it through each of the steps so that you can kind of see what it looks like live fire. Because everybody likes to uh, hear the guns go boom, boom. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let me go ahead and get everything in position here. Okay, your holster up. And I'm going to go ahead and cut at this point and reset because I need to get a, uh, another speed loader in my pouch. So stand by one and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. I've got my speed loader pouches replenished. Got a few extras in the back pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do a reload for you. It's not going to be blindingly fast or anything. I want you to be able to see the steps. And then I'll slow it down and actually walk you through it. So we come up on target. And we're empty. So we do that. and we're Well, I'm already talking through. huh? Go ahead and line up those two. Press it in. And let's go ahead and do it again. Go to the second one. And we're up. So let me go ahead and reset at this point. And uh, I'm going to actually slow it down. Well, actually what I should do is show you the, uh, the second version. Okay, sorry about that jump cut. I uh, decided um, right after I showed that first variation of the speed load. Um, I thought it would be best rather than show that second reload with the K-frame, let's go ahead and show it on what it's actually intended to be used on and that's the J-frame. 
uh, because I alluded earlier that that second um, technique was developed because of some problems related to the size of the J-frame, and this would also apply to the Ruger SP-101. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If we try that first method with a J-frame, so we're assuming here we've got an empty cylinder, I've fired all five rounds, I go ahead and open up, and I do that thing where I rest the trigger guard in the palm of my hand, close my thumb down over the cylinder, and lock my other fingers down on the side of the frame. When I tilt up to hit that ejector rod, you can kind of see the problem we're talking about. My hand is pretty much blocking this. So I, if I bring the palm of my hand down to hit that ejector rod, I'm not going to get much movement at all out of that rod. And I've actually had that happen a couple of times where I get kind of jammed up and then I have to kind of move my hand back and clear a spot. Now then what happens is what just happened now. I actually close down and the ejector star catches on the palm of my hand on the way out or rips a hole in my hand. I've had that happen too. So the idea with that second reloading technique is that when I open up that cylinder, I rest my thumb on the top of the cylinder and tilt the whole assembly up. Now nothing is in the way. This is the ejector star is not going to catch on anything. This is wide open so that when I come down with my off hand to hit that ejector rod, I get a full stroke on that rod. No problem at all. So that's uh, kind of it in a nutshell. So let me go ahead and uh, if I can find this other speed loader. Well, oh, there it is, back pocket. Sorry about that. Um, let's go ahead and uh, load five in. And I'll show you the reload process. And I'll do it kind of slow, and I'll probably talk my way through it. It's not really um, that germane for me to blaze through six or eight speed loads, speed loads to show you how fast it can be done. Rather, you just need to learn the steps of it. So we'll go ahead and press five off. I'll do a reload and talk you through it. So here we go. Back up on this next one. I'll go ahead and talk you through it. So we cleared out, we've knocked all the empties out, rest it back in the palm of the hand, muzzle down, speed loader out, index two, let it fall into place, press the speed loader body or turn the knob, close the cylinder back up. Just like so. So that's two different methods. Now I want to show you something. I'm glad this happened because it didn't happen on the first two. Every now and again you're going to run into this, particularly with J-frames. You're going to have one that's kind of stubborn. It's usually going to be the one right there. Now what's probably happened, it, uh, chances are it, it should have cleared the, uh, the cylinder release. I'm not too sure why this happens on like every third or fourth time, but it ha it's happened to me for years and years. So one thing you want to be prepared for is if you do have one of those stragglers there to just strip it out and get it out of the way. You may have to do that. You may have to, with the speed loader in your hand, knock that out with your finger to clear uh, the charge hole so that you can get the speed loader in. But be watching for that as well. Something that can happen, again, generally does not seem to happen with the guns that have the longer ejector rod. Um, because again, because of, of the physical parameters of this thing with the length of the barrel, there's only so much ejector rod that you can put on here and you don't get a full run. You don't get a full run of the length of the case. So that's going to happen on these. Uh, what you don't want, you don't want to pump it up and down. Just hit it the one time. If you have one straggler, toss it out and you're good to go. So with that, I'll bring it to a close. Thank you for watching and or listening. Good luck with those revolvers and keep working at it. So this is Scott with Spectre Gear, and um, I think that's kind of about it. Well, <laughs> if I can clear this coat out of the way. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.